stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I'm launching a new campaign with uh, none other than uh, Safina Rousseau, the painter, the uh, new rogue investigator from the uh, Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion. I've uh, wanted to give Safina a try for a little bit. I really enjoy playing her. And I'm hoping that uh, we can kick off this campaign and uh, have some success with her. I've had some pretty close games against Curtain Call with her, and I'm hoping we will be able to uh, pull off a victory here today. Here is the uh, deck that I'm going to be using. It's uh, I've got two copies of Rite of Seeking, two copies of Shriveling, and uh, two copies of Holy Rosary. Those really shouldn't come as much surprise. Neither should uh, two copies of... Uh, the man, Leo DeLuca, who we're going to be relying on heavily to get uh, those extra actions. There's two copies of Arcane Studies in there, largely for the uh, the extra boost to our intellect, which we need in this scenario. And there's a copy of Lone Wolf as well to give us some resources. Events are the backbone of a uh, Safina deck, so we've got two copies of Drawn to the Flame, two copies of Elusive, two copies of Emergency Cache, one Sneak Attack, one Storm of Spirits, two Think on Your Feet uh, for Enemy Management, as well as two Uncaged Soul and Ward of Protection. The uh, skill package is a gut, two copies of Guts, Manual Dexterity Perception, and Unexpected Courage. So uh, you may notice, uh, notice I uh, haven't included Delve too deep into this deck just because I've uh, I tried it in this deck, and, and Safina really doesn't need to be drawing any more encounter cards from the from the deck uh, than uh, necessary. So I'm hoping that uh, that uh, yeah, I decided to leave that out for for now, and uh, we'll see how we do. We uh, also have our campaign here set up. We've got Curtain Call and the Last King, followed by the. Uh, the final uh, six mythos packs. Uh, it's. Um, I hope everybody out there has had a great holidays. I've uh, been using mine in order to catch up on my playing a little bit. I haven't had a chance to play as much as I'd like, so I've been uh, making my way through all the scenarios, and uh, I've uh, caught up to a Phantom of Truth, which I've been playing uh, with a couple different decks on uh, both the uh, Conviction and Doubt settings, and. Uh, not sure what I think of it. I think the uh, Unspeakable Oath is a, is, an, uh, is a fantastic scenario. I really like that one. I haven't played uh, Echoes of the Past nearly as much as uh, Unspeakable Oath, uh, which I thought was really uh, really quite challenging, but also quite fair. You know, if you uh, if you play smart, you can uh, you can get through it. So uh, we're going to see how uh, Safina does here. We are set up and ready to go over on uh, over in Octagon. We'll bring that up. Of course, we have Safina here at the theater. It's a two-shroud location with uh, zero clues. And uh, we've also got our backstage, lobby, and uh, balcony locations out. We uh, have set aside the man in the pellet mask, as well as uh, the royal emissary, who will uh, be joining us at some point uh, during this scenario. I hope I am either close to finishing it or finished before he uh, causes us much in the way of trouble. Our agenda is 1A, the third act, and it has a doom threshold of 6, and our act is 1A, awakening, and we need three clues per investigator in order to advance to uh, act 2, our act 1B. We are playing uh, Curtain Call on standard difficulty. The skulls are minus one, minus three instead if you have three or more horror on you. And the cultist tablets and elder things are minus four. And if your location has at least one horror on it, take one horror from the token pool. If your location has no horror on it, place a horror on it instead. Of course, we don't have to worry about those right at this time because we've got... Uh, there are none of them in the bag, so we don't have to worry about them. I uh, haven't drawn an open uh, a weakness yet for Safina, so we will shuffle the. Uh, we are going to uh, shuffle up our our batch of weaknesses and see what we get here for this uh, this campaign. This should be uh, it's always an interesting 
moment. So we have the mob enforcer. That's uh, that's of course the uh, he's got uh, four combat, three health, and three agility, and uh, he's got the hunter trait, of course. And you can take an action to spend resources to parlay with him and uh, discard the mob enforcer, and he will do one damage. Not really happy about uh, seeing another enemy in uh, in my deck, but uh, what can you do? We'll see how it goes, and uh, hopefully we can pull out a W here. Of course, Safina, is, uh, her forced ability lets us draw 13 cards at the beginning of our, the game, and if we choose up to five events and place them beneath her, and we keep eight cards in our opening hand, so we are going to do that. We will do that now and see what we get. Thirteen cards is a ton of cards, so I'm always amazed when I <laughs> draw my hand for Safina and I see all these cards in my hand. So we don't need the mob boss can go away. We get to draw a replacement for him. So let's see what we've got for events. There's a sneak attack. There's our Storm of Spirits. There's a Ward of Protection. There's an Elusive. And we only ended up with... Oh, no, there's another Elusive. Okay, so we got both of our Elusives, as well as a uh, Sneak Attack and Storm of Spirits, which means we get to keep our uh, other eight cards. Yep. So uh, nice to see we got Leo DeLuca in our opening hand as well as our Lone Wolf. That's uh, that's fantastic. We're going to try to get those down as quickly as possible. Uh, we've got a couple Rite of Seeking, our uh, Holy Rosary, and a Shriveling. So we've got all the parts we need, actually. this uh, It's a pretty good hand, I think, um, with Leo, the Lone Wolf, uh, Rite of Seeking, and the Shriveling. So I think we're ready to uh, kick things off, so we're going to take our first action to gain a resource, which we will then use. Uh, we will spend all six to get out Leo. That uh, leaves us with two actions left, uh, and we are going to spend another one to gain a resource, which we will then spend to get out our Lone Wolf. And that will be our turn. So a nice opening turn. We've got Leo in play, as well as the Lone Wolf, which will give us an extra resource whenever our turn begins. And there's no other investigators at our location, which of course we don't have to worry about in this game since we are just playing by ourselves. So we will draw a card. There's our second copy of Holy Rosary, gain a resource, add a doom. And our first encounter card of the game is going to be... A Rotting Remains. So we are testing four versus three. I'm uh, content to stay at that. We'll see what we get. There's a minus two, so we are going to take a horror. Uh, I will put it on, uh, yeah, I'll put it on Safina for now. All right, we are uh, ready to take our second turn. So we can choose an event beneath the, uh, we can take an action to grab any of these events beneath here. We can also play them with the uh, Painted World, our signature our signature card, if of course we can uh, find them, which we uh, haven't done yet. So uh, we do gain another resource due to Lone Wolf. So that puts us at two. Uh, we're going to need... We're going to need some... In, some uh, investigate power if we're going to get uh, grab some clues here. So I'm going to move Safina over to the backstage. We'll flip that over. It's a three shadowed location with one clue and ha it has the forced effect. When the backstage is revealed you put two of the set aside uh, backstage door locations into play. So we will go do that now. We'll shuffle these up. There is one of them. That's a lobby, and there is the second backstage. All right. So we want to grab this clue. Unfortunately, our uh, intellect is only a two. Uh, but we do have three actions remaining. So I am going to play this perception. 
Uh, that will give us a 4 versus 3. That, is that going to be good enough? Uh, I'm going to pitch this other copy of Right of Seeking. I don't think we're going to need two, so that'll put us at five versus three. Hopefully that's going to be enough. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say. Chaos Bag says minus four, so that's going to be a huge failure. Unfortunately, we don't get the card draw for the Perception, which is uh, which is often really what you want more than more than anything else. That was our second action. We've got two to go, and uh, unfortunately we don't have... Uh, we don't really have any other options as as far as uh, as far as uh, investigate go. So I'm just going to gain. We could wait a turn and gain them naturally. Really don't like the odds of just trying to to uh, investigate at this location without. Uh, I'm going to draw a card here. See what we get. There's a guts, and we'll draw one more. There is our copy of the Painted World. All right, so now we've got our uh, our Word of Protection is online, as well as our Elusos and whatnot. So that's that's good. We will have a full hand going into the next turn. There's an emergency cash. That's good. We'll gain a resource, add a doom, and draw our second encounter card which is, I knew this guy was coming, the Agent of the King. When I first started playing this scenario way back when it uh, first came out, I think I drew this guy like every single game for the first 10 games. Like, first, second turn, he would always come out. And uh, here he is again. So he will engage us here at, uh, at the backstage. And, uh, of course, he's got... Uh, Four fight, four health, and two evade. The humanoid cultist traits. He's a hunter, and uh, after he attacks you, you've got to move a clue to your uh, from the uh, agent of the king, uh, or from you to the agent of the king. And when you defeat him, you get to take control of all the clues. So we've got some work to do now. We are going to have to evade this guy. Uh, we do get a resource from uh, Lone Wolf. We could evade him and then hit him for two damage, which might be nice. But we also need to get our right of seeking out. So I'm going to just try to straight up evade him to start with here as our first action. It's a four versus two. We'll see how we do. And the Chaos Bag says that's a zero, so he will be evaded. That's nice. So we are going to, let's get our Rite of Seeking down. Uh, we'll get that down there. And it has three charges. Let's try to get this clue here. It's, uh, it's going to be a four versus three, unfortunately, which isn't a great uh, isn't great. We really should try to get down our Holy Rosary as well here, but we're a little... Well, actually, let's go back a sec. How, how would we do that? Can we get the Holy Rosary down this turn? Uh, no, we can't. So we're going to just go four versus three. We'll see what we can do here. There's a skull. That's a minus one. So we do succeed. Unfortunately, we drew a skull, so uh, we lose all remaining actions for this turn. We do grab the clue, though, so that's decent. Go to the enemy phase. The uh, the agent of the king isn't going to attack us, but when we go to the upkeep, he is going to ready and engage us again. Uh, we are going to draw a card. There's a draw into the flame. I wish I'd seen that a little bit earlier. Gain a resource, a doom. And let's see what we get for our next encounter card. There's some rats to add to the uh, the party here. We are under a lot of pressure right uh, right away here. Now we can. It's unfortunate that uh, Storm of Spirits costs three because we could uh, we could try to set something up with that and maybe end up killing the. Uh, 
the agent of the king and the rats but uh, unfortunately we're going to be one resource short even if we gain a resource with uh, lone wolf this turn so we are going to can Safina kill the rats? Safina can kill the rats then we can evade the Well, we're going to kill the rats. Let's try that first, because if we evade, we can play Painted World to, for our sneak attack. And then maybe draw the sneak attack later and hit him with it again, thereby killing the agent of the king. So we'll see what we can do here. We're going to go two versus one. And uh, we'll see what we do. First off, there's another skull. So the rats do die. We've got three actions remaining. Uh, we are going to try to evade the agent of the king. We will discard our manual dexterity. Uh, we'll play the manual. Sorry, we're going to not discard it. We'll pitch it to this test. So we're going to go four versus, uh, s um, sorry, six versus two. I mainly want the card out of this. There's a minus three, so I'm glad we... Uh, we did, or we would have missed that uh, test. But we do evade him. So he will go back here. We do get to draw a card for the manual dexterity. There's a think on our feet. Okay, that will help us a little bit, but uh, we're sort of running on fumes here as far as resources go. We've got two actions left. We can play the Painted World to copy our sneak attack. So we will pay our two resources and we will do two damage to the agent of the king. That leaves us with one action left. Uh, we need some resources here. So we're gonna play our, we'll play our copy of emergency cash. All right. Uh, the uh, agent of the king isn't going to attack us this turn, so we will ready him, bring him back. We will draw a card. There's another think on our feet. We will gain a resource. Add a doom. We are getting very close to uh, when the uh, that uh, royal emissary is going to come out, and we really haven't accomplished very much yet. So let's see what our next encounter card is. It is the uh, the king's edict. It is uh, for each cultist enemy in play, move one clue from that enemy's location to that enemy. Uh, there are no clues at his location. And each uh, cultist enemy in play gets one f plus one fight for each clue and or doom on it. If there are no clues, move by this effect against search. So it's going to simply surge into... Oh dear. So, revealed location with the most clues, that's the Fanatic. We can uh, actually move him to... We can drop the Fanatic over here at the theater, because we have no... Uh, we've got a choice between the backstage and the theater, and so we will dump him at the theater, so we don't have to fight two enemies at once. All right, we have a plan here. We can... Now we can take an action to grab our, first of all, we need our lone wolf money. I want that. We are going to play our, now we can, first of all, we can either, we can grab the sneak attack and then evade, or we can evade first and grab our sneak attack. It doesn't really matter which way we do it. So I'm gonna try to evade first. We're going four versus two. Chaos Bag says minus one, so he is evaded. We will use our next action to grab that copy of Sneak Attack. We will use our third action to play it, killing the Agent of the King. Hooray for that, holy cow. Glad to see him gone. We will add him to our victory display. We've got uh, one action left which I think we're going to... Let's 
move up here. Let's check out this uh, backstage doorway, see what it is. And it is, of course, the trap room. That's th the uh, three shroud location with one clue. And it has the forced effect. After you reveal the trap room, you've got to search the encounter deck and discard pile for one copy of Swarm of Rats and put it into play engaged with you. So we will go hunting for some rats. We will look at all the cards, see what, if we can find ourselves. A, we know there's lots of copies of rats in there, so no worries there. Glad to see the last king uh, go away. That's always nice. All right, so we've got some rats. Unfortunately, they are going to attack us this turn, so we are going to take a damage. I'm going to dump that damage on uh, on Leo. And I believe that will be, we are going to the upkeep phase, so everything stays the same. We will drop, uh, we draw Guts, we gain a resource, add a Doom, and we draw another encounter card, which is another Rats. <laughs> There's a lot of Rats in this trap room. Okay, so we've got two copies of Rats to deal with now. Uh, fortunately, well, two versus one isn't fantastic. We will gain our resource from Lone Wolf first of all. Uh, we could. Is it worthwhile? Might be worthwhile uh, actually grabbing our copy of Storm of Spirits and wiping all the rats out. I think that's what we're going to do. We'll. Uh, we're going to uh, take the action to grab that, to choose that event. It doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. We will... Or is that worthwhile? We've got, a be we've got better odds. We could miss the rats. That's the problem. Yeah, we'll do it this way. We'll pay three. Play Storm of Spirits. And we've got a couple copies of Guts, so I'm going to play one of those. So actually, we don't need to do that. It's a uh, it's going to be a four versus one, and if we succeed, we're going to kill all the rats. So let's see how we do here. Chaos Bag says that's an auto fail. Oh dear. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse than it just did. We will take a damage because of uh, Storm of Spirits game text. Uh, because we drew the tentacle, we have to deal one damage to each investigator at our location. So yeah, that uh, that couldn't have gone any worse, really. So we've got two actions left. And really, we just have to kill these rats. So it's going to be two versus one. Let's see how we do. That's a minus one. So one rats goes away and two versus one again and there's an elder sign so that's uh we get plus three and we can draw an event up i think i'm gonna grab a copy of do i want my copy of elusive yeah i think i do and so we killed both the rats but it took us four actions to do so and we took a damage out of it, so I'm not thrilled about that. That's That sucks. Oh well. And that's going to be our turn, unfortunately. We, we spent our whole turn doing that. Uh, no enemies are moving around. We get to draw a card. There's an unexpected courage. We need to drop some cards here. We're going to get rid of a Think on Your Feet and one of our Holy Rosaries. That'll bring us back down to eight. We're going to gain a resource. Add a Doom, and that will bring out... That's going to flip us and bring out the Royal Emissary. He shows up at uh, the theater. He shows up right here. And we advance to uh, Agenda 2B, or sorry, 2A, which is Encore. And it has the forced effect. After the Royal Emissary is added to the victory display, we remove all Doom from play and reset the agenda deck to Agenda 1A and place three Doom on it. So if we want this game to continue, we are going to have to kill the Royal Emissary because we are not in a position to... Uh, 
to finish this game anytime soon. And yep, yeah, so we have to, uh, we've added a Doom, so now we just draw our encounter card, which is going to be, oh, it's this one, the uh, Spirit's Torment, that uh, it has the Cursed and Geist traits. We attach it to our location, and after we leave, we either take a horror or lose an action. But we can place one of our clues on it to uh, discard it. That uh, seems very unlikely to happen, since we are running quite far behind uh, in this game already. We have a couple more clues to get. We're going to spend a resource uh, off of our right of seeking. Uh, so we're going to go four versus three. We're going to spend a guts on that to put us at uh, six versus three. See what the chaos bag says. Plus one. That's fine. So we uh, draw a card with the guts and we get this clue. That was our first action. We have. Uh, did I. No, I didn't gain my uh, my resource for Lone Wolf yet this turn. So we've got, uh, just put these markers here, we've got three actions left. Uh, we're going to take a horror next turn. Uh, we need to get out our shriveling, because that's going to be our... Uh, we're going to go one, two, three to play our shriveling. That's going to get us four charges. Two actions remaining. Uh, if we move, we've got to take a horror. So we'll do that. With our third action, we will take a horror. It's going to go on Leo. And then our final action, we are going to move to the backstage doorway. Let's see what this is. This could be. Uh, this could be a really important. Uh, ah. It is the dressing room. That's really unfortunate because now we've got to make the trek all the way across the map to uh, find to try to find a uh, another clue. And uh, yeah, that's bad luck for us, unfortunately, because it's going to be that much tougher. Now we've really got to kill this. Uh, we're going to probably have to kill the royal emissary twice this game, and that's going to be. Uh, that's a tall order. So, that was our turn. Royal Emissary moves. We're going to take a horror from the Royal Emissary. So we will uh, do that now. And... Yes, taking a horror. So we draw a card. There's another copy of the Painted World. Okay, well, we've got a couple. We could use that to play either our Ward of Protection or our Elusive. Unfortunately, uh, there's not. we need another revealed location, which would be the lobby. But I think we're going to have to get there the hard way, going through all these... Uh, all of these enemies. But that's... Uh, I'm afraid that's our, our lot here. Okay, so we're going to gain a resource. Our hand size is fine. We're going to gain a gain a doom, and let's see what we get for an encounter card. Now, I actually wouldn't mind seeing an enemy here because then I could play Think on Our Feet and move to uh, a connecting location and strand the enemy. So let's see what we get. No, we get to uh, Think on Your Feet, <laughs> or sorry, we get Whispers in Your Head Doubt, which is the worst. Um, this is Safina's uh, Achilles heel, unfortunately. Peril hidden. Secretly add whispers of your whispers in your head. Doubt to your hand. Uh, you cannot play events, and you can take the double action to get rid of it. That's rough. That's a uh, very very rough for Safina. And if we move to this backstage, we're going to have to pitch a ton of cards in our hand. Unfortunately, uh, I'm almost content to fight the Royal Emissary here. I'm almost willing to do that because 
otherwise we're going to have to lose or we can go maybe we go move evade move evade move evade and that gets us that gets us at least to the theater and then we can maybe worry about the emissary on the way back yeah that might be a better better course of action this turn cuz i don't want to i really don't want to get stuck at backstage cuz this thing whispers in your head doubt can't counts as three cards in your hand and so it's gonna I'm gonna have to discard something so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go move we will be engaged with the royal emissary but it's only a two agility we are going to uh, play our manual dexterity to try to evade it so we are going six versus two let's see what the chaos bag has to say there's a skull that is still a minus one because we are just under the uh, the the whole uh, horror threshold. So we get to draw a card. We didn't get our resource that turn for Lone Wolf. Need to remember that. So he is exhausted. Okay. We're gonna take another horror next turn. Unfortunately, move. Um, you know, I'm almost willing to. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to pay two to put down our Holy Rosary. Then I'm going to move. I'm going to engage this guy. Because I'm going to take a horror regardless. But this way I can put the horror on the Holy Rosary and not myself. Unfortunately, I think we might... Uh, this is going to be very close, I think. Okay, our hand size is okay now. We are going to take a damage, though, from the Fanatic, which uh, we can't really avoid unfortunately so we will do that uh, where's my damage button there we go okay damage from the fanatic the uh, royal emissary will hit us for a horror which we will put on the rosary and then we will go to the upkeep the royal emissary will ready and he's already attacked us and so we just draw a card. Uh, we haven't played any events, have we? No, we have not. Okay. We drew a, our second copy of Ward of Protection. So we are going to need to somehow get rid of... Uh, we really need to find the time to get rid of this Whispers. We're going to gain a resource, add a doom, and draw a card. Counter card. Oh, game. That uh, hurts. Spires of Carcosa, of course, that's the omen, the revelation where you attach to your location and place two doom on that location. And uh, you can investigate, of course, to remove those doom. Unfortunately, uh, that basically brings us to the brink. We're at uh, four out of six, and uh, we've either got to kill... Now we've really got to kill the emissary, is what we've got to do. And we've got to do it with no events. So do we wait for him to come to us? We can't really wait for him to come to us if we want to keep Leo, because otherwise he's going to do two damage and a horror. So we are kind of in a bad spot. 
Let's gain our uh, resource first of all for Lone Wolf. Then we are going to... <sighs> yeah, that Spire has just uh, turned the game on its head. Uh, I could do some investigate checks. Uh, but you've got to do it with your native invest with your nat your base investigative two, and there's two versus two. That's just terrible odds. All right. Well, we've got uh, four actions still. We are going to move back. We are going to shoot at the emissary. We are a four, five versus four. So we will spend our shriveling charge to go five versus four. I'm going to pitch a copy of Guts. That will bring us to seven versus four for two damage. He does have retaliate. Let's see what the chaos bag says. <sighs> Chaos bag. Oh, there's a tentacle. All right. Well, that's uh, that really hurts. Oh, wait a second. What am I doing here? I engage with this guy. I have to deal with him first. Okay. Let's roll things back for a second here. I'm already engaged with somebody. I got to deal with this guy first. Get our shriveling charge back. Uh, four versus three. I can't play events, unfortunately, due to this whispers in your head. Otherwise, I might consider using one of my elusives to get myself out of this situation. Um, what do we do here? I guess we can evade him. Or we can just kill him. We'd still have a couple shriveling charges left. Shoot, move, then we get two cracks at him. All right, that's what we'll do. Five versus three to kill the fanatic. Let's see how we do, Chaos Bag. Are you going to give me another tentacle? No, you're not. You're going to give me minus two. So we do kill the fanatic. Now we can move. We've got two actions remaining. Uh, do we evade him first? No, I just want to kill him. I just want to kill him. So now we will do that. We are, we'll spend another shriveling charge. We're five versus four. We will spend a guts. We will go uh, seven versus four. Let's see how we do. There's a skull, that's a minus one. So we hit the Royal Emissary for two damage, and we draw a card for the Guts. There's another drawn to the flame. And we've got one action to go here. Uh, let's try to kill him. I'm going to pitch my... I'm going to have to pitch cards anyway, so I'm not really disposed to hanging on to them right then, at this time. Uh, we're going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to have to discard two anyway. So we will play our Uncage the Soul. Uh, we'll pitch it to this test. So again, we are seven versus four. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, and the Royal Emissary goes down. Okay. We'll add him to our victory display. Okay, so that was our turn. Now we remove all doom in play, so the Spires of Carcosa goes away. That goes away. All the doom goes away, and we reset back to Agenda 1A. And we put 
put three doom on it. Okay. So we are uh, we uh, we've sort of reset the board here. We have one shriveling charge left, and we go to the upkeep phase. We draw a card, but these things count as threes. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We need to ditch three cards. Uh, I'm going to ditch my water protection, one of the drawn to the flames, and man, oh man, we really only need one more clue, so I'm going to get that drawn to the flame as well. Okay, we get a doom, or we, sorry, we get a, uh, a resource. We add a doom, going back up to four, and we draw our next encounter card, which is Frozen in Fear. Wish I had a lot of uh, logical reasoning now to uh, to deal with that, or I could play events and cancel it with my uh, Ward of Protection. So of course we move. That's going to cost us two actions. Uh, move, fight, or evades cost us two. So we're going to move. That's going to cost us two actions. Uh, we actually have two more actions remaining, so that's nice. Uh, we can go... Thanks to Leo. Leo's keeping us in this game, like he always does. I mean, he's, he's amazing. Um, we'll go... Balcony... Are the balconies worth... VPs. So I'm going to go one, two. Bring us to the balcony. Two shroud location with one clue. We will uh, hopefully be able to clear that. It is the end of our turn though, so we do get to try to test for Frozen in Fear. We're a five versus three. Come on, Chaos Bag, give it to us. Zero. Nice. Okay, so the Frozen in Fear goes away. And uh, we don't have to deal with that anymore. So we will draw a card. I don't think we gained our resource for uh, Lone Wolf. I always forget about that. Let's see, water protection. I don't think I did, no. Okay, so we will add another resource. Could be important, never know. All right, so we draw a card. There is our arcane studies. Okay, that is what I want out as quickly as we can get it out. We add a doom, see what we get for our encounter card. There's the poltergeist. Oh no, that's a big pain in the butt, that one. Of course, it cannot be damaged uh, except by spells, relics, or other en or encounter cards. Fortunately, we do have a shriveling charge left, so we can take it out. And we're going to have to do that, first of all. So let's do that. We will spend our shriveling charge. Well, let's go back. Let's gain our money first. That's why we have the card. Pay a re pay our uh, charge for shriveling. We will draw. Did I? Uh, I cannot remember whether I took the. Let's go back for a sec. I just want to make sure I didn't draw any uh, skulls or special tokens. I drew a zero. I drew, let's see, I did draw one zero, so I know that. Drew a minus two. I did draw a skull, okay, so I've got to take another horror here. So how do we do this? Um, 
So if I drew a skull, I'm going to be at minus 3 afterwards. So I have to either... I'm going to put it on the rosary. I really don't want to... We'll discard it. Okay, so now we've fixed that uh, that little error there. Okay, so instead of going uh, 5 versus 4, we're going 4 versus 3 against the uh, the poltergeist with our spell. Do we have anything we can pitch? Uh, we've got a painted world. I'm going to do that for 2. So we'll pitch the painted world to give us another 2. So we'll be at 6 versus 3. And we get a minus 1. So we are successful. The poltergeist will die. Okay. We are caught up. We have three actions left. I'm just trying, I'm desperately trying to keep Leo in the game here. I, I mean, I, there's many times I could have gotten rid of him, but... Uh, okay, we've got three actions left. We need to get this clue, first of all, so we can flip our agenda, or flip the act. So let's do that now. We're going to spend the uh, right of seeking, we're going to go 4 versus 2. Actually, let's uh, let's actually do something first. Let's get that Arcane Studies into play first. So we will do that. Because if we if we blow this right of seeking thing, we could lose all our actions. That way we we don't lose all our actions this way. We can still play our right of seeking. So we are going four versus two. Let's see what the chaos bag says. There is a a big elder sign. That is nice. We will draw our second copy of elusive and we will grab this clue, which we can now advance. So we will do that. So let's do that now. So we will spend our three clues to advance to Act 1A. So we get a random 1A. Let's toss all those out. Shuffle them up. It's going to be that one. All right. So the uh, man in the pup. Whoops. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. There we go. So we choose a set aside location at random. Uh, we've got. Actually, we went through the lobby, so we've got to shuffle these up and put out our lobby locations. First of all. All right, so what do you think? What are our chances of him showing up close? Let's see, shuffle him up. Let's flip him over. Visibility, nobody. There we go. Shuffle these up, and the man in the pallet mask is going to show up at the uh, lobby. All right. Hooray. Okay, so he comes to this lobby. Now, we don't have a way to kill him. That's the problem. But we do have a way to in investigate him. If necessary, because we've got our arcane studies out now. We've got two actions left. We really need to... Uh, Actually, our elusives aren't going to help us a great deal at the moment. Question is, do we get rid of that thing? He's coming there. Yeah, we're going to get rid of this. We'll take the two actions to get rid of whispers in, in your head, doubt. And that'll do it for our turn. Uh, what are we doing here? There we go. Okay, 
nothing in the enemy phase. We will just draw a card. Oh, nice. Our second copy of Shriveling shows up right when we need it. We will add a resource, add a Doom, which of course is going to flip us back. And we have to go get the Royal Emissary again, unfortunately, and bring him back to the theater. Put Encore back into play, and we draw a uh, Encounter card, which is Whispers in Your Head Anxiety, which uh, we cannot trigger free abilities. Uh, I don't think I've... Oh, that hoses us big time. Of course that hoses us big time. Okay. Um, yeah. So if we play this, we, uh, this thing is going to prevent us from using our arcane studies, which is really our only way of, uh, either out investigating this guy or what. So we are going to have to, we're going to gain a resource for Lone Wolf. We can play... Um, what's the best option here? We move. If we use two resources, we can move back to the lobby. Lobby should have a clue on it. Uh, if we play our elusive, we move back to the lobby for free. Then we've got four actions left. We can move, drop our shriveling, and then we've got to, so move back for free, or we just go move, move, see what this location is, yeah, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move to the lobby and to this, um, the lobby doorway, flip it over. Okay, it's the two shroud one. Okay, so that's, oh, there's no clues on it. That is the box office. Uh, it's a two shroud location with zero clues, and you can uh, spend, take an action to, to gain five resources. Remember that you have stolen from the box office. So I am going to actually take my action to get rid of uh, Whispers in Your Head Anxiety as my final two actions for this turn. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to investigate here to clear it, to, to defeat the man in the pallet mask here, move back, do it again. That's all we have to do to win this game. Okay, so the, so the uh, Royal Emissary comes back to the lobby. We are going to take a horror. I'm really trying to hang on as long as I can. I think Leo has has run out of uses here. He's going to have to go at this point. So unfortunately, we're going to say goodbye to Leo. And uh, we'll go from there. OK. That's the enemy phase. We draw a card. We get Leo back. Okay. That might actually be... He might be worth playing again. We'll see. Add a Doom. Let's see what we get for an encounter card. It is an enemy. It is a fanatic revealed location with most clues. Okay, there are no locations. Oh, there is one location with the most clues, and that is there. Okay, so now there's a fanatic there as well. Okay, so now how do we do this? We need to defeat him twice and somehow not die. 
Okay. We are a two versus two, but it's going to be a four because his plus two. All right, let's. All right, we got to think this through because we've got a lot happening here and we need to be able to defeat him. Okay, we get a we do get a resource from Lone Wolf, so we we're up to 9, so that gives us a nice little We could play Leo again. Unfortunately, that's going to we're going to need going to need some resources here. We're going to need more resources if we want to get, if we want to try to kill this Royal Emissary again, or do we just go for it and hope for the best? I'm actually going to play Leo again. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Let's get him back into play. This will save us from an, it gives us an extra action this turn and it will save us if the Royal Emissary attacks us next turn. Okay, so now we need to, our elusives aren't gonna help us anymore. So we can ditch those. We can almost pitch our entire hand here to a test if necessary. Uh, let's do that first. We are going to take the uh, investigate test on the man in the pallid mask at the box office for two. Oh, we can get five resources. We've got three actions left. We could get five resources. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We are going to steal from the box office as our second action for five resources. Sorry, box office, but uh, I uh, added a horror accidentally. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're back up to eight. Now we can... We've got two actions left. So we can take the action on um, the man in the pallet mask. Worst we can do is a minus, f minus four. So we need to be up enough. So we're going to go, we're going to pitch one copy of Unexpected Courage. So we are at four versus four. We're going to pitch elusive, five versus four, six versus four, seven versus four. And one resource to go eight versus four. Okay, eight versus four. Come on, chaos bag. I need this. This is a big one. Minus one. We nailed it. Okay. We defeat the man in the pallet mask. So he will go to the lobby. Uh, bring to front. All right. So we defeated the man in the pallet mask. Uh, sorry. I need to bring out my... Uh, there's my act. Okay, so we've defeated him. We advance to act 2B. Come on. All right, let's see what it is. It is the tablet one. So instead of discarding the man in the pallet mask, this is the path is mine. We uh, move into the lobby. We add two tablet tokens to the chaos bag. So let's do that right now. I have to go get uh, my little bag with the tablets in it. 
where are the tablets? Tablets, tablets, tablets. There they are. Okay, so we've added those to the chaos bag. Uh, we place one horror on the location the man in the pallid mass was moved from. So there is a horror here. Uh, until the end of the scenario, horror on locations represents advancing ooze, and each location with horror gains forced. After you leave this location, test four agility. If you fail, take a horror and a damage. Okay. We've got one action left. So we keep that there. And we go... Uh, we actually need to grab our other one. There we go. Okay. We have one action left. We've got the ooze that we need to deal with, which is going to be... So if we want to leave this location, we need to test for and take a horror and a damage. That's okay. Now the question is here, do I play my shriveling? and try to kill the emissary or do we just go for it? It's going to be a six. I think I can do it. I think I can do it, but I don't think I can kill the emissary. Because if he hits me... Or do I just wait for the emissary to show up? Sacrifice Leo to the emissary. Then next turn I evade the emissary, move in. Oh, but then I gotta I engage that chump. But if I do a if I do the right action, I can uh, if I do that investigate test and nail it, then I'll be okay. Um, tough choice. Or I drop my shriveling. The royal emissary comes in. I try to kill it. In which case, I have plenty of time. Okay, I think that's what we'll do. We're going to go for gusto here, I think. We are going to add... We'll pay three to bring out our copy of Shriveling. Get rid of that one. Add four charges. Okay. So that's that. The uh, emissary moves into us. I am going to actually take the damage. Yep. I take the damage. Leo's going to take the horror. So he's still alive. We still have four actions. The man in the pallid mask is hanging out there. Uh, we could potentially kill him too if we wanted to. Um, we've done all that. We draw a card. We haven't seen our weakness yet. There's a perception. Okay, that's huge. Uh, okay, and we gain a resource. Add a doom and draw an encounter card. Okay, that's the twisted to his will. That's the pact. There's no doom in play, it gains surge, otherwise you test X. Now I really want to pass this because I want those two cards to, to stay in my hand. So that's two versus four. Uh, it can go... get another resource next turn. I'm going to spend one on it. So I'm going to go five versus two. And we get a minus one, so we pass. So nothing happens there. 
Okay. It's showtime. We get a resource for Lone Wolf. Now we need to kill this guy this turn. Or we simply evade him at this point. Is that a better play? We've got four actions. Evade, move. Um, we could do it. I'm just not sure, because if he hits us, he's got that retaliate. I think I just want to get out of this scenario. I'm going to get three VPs as it stands because I killed the man, or I killed the agent of the king, so I'm going to get three. That's not bad. Evade, move, kill. Yeah, I think that's what we do. So we're going to try to evade the royal emissary. We're going to go four versus two. See what the chaos bag has to say. Skull, we're still minus one, so he is evaded. Okay, now we have to move. So that, we have three actions left. Whoops. Uh, where's our action tab? There we go. Okay, so now we're going to move, but when we move, we've got to make a test four, and if we fail, we take a damage and a horror. Uh, we can sacrifice Leo there, and we'll have two actions remaining. So we will move. It doesn't stop our move or anything like that. Oh, we need to... Uh, yeah, we needed to put a horror here as well. I don't think it affects us. It's only when you leave, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, four versus four. Um, yeah, we still get our three actions if we, we've used two, we still have two actions left if Leo dies, so I'm not too concerned. That is a skull, so he will die. We will pass it on Leo. We've got two actions left because you use Leo's action first. That's always important to remember. Leo, when you've got extra actions, you always use Leo's action first. So I've got two left. I'm engaged with this guy. Now, if I take if I take the uh, fanatic, if I just take an action, no, I can't take that. I have to kill the fanatic now because Leo, I have that damage. Okay, so we're going to have to kill the fanatic first. Uh, so we are going uh, four versus three. Let's go. We'll spend two resources on arcane studies to go six versus three. Actually, we're going to spend one more. We're going to go seven versus three. Oh, I'm glad we did that. Minus four. And uh, we pass. So we kill that guy. And we take a horror because of the tablet. Okay, so now we're in... in uh, so we take a horror. Okay, so we've we've waited basically as long as we can to uh So we've got one action left. Do we try it this turn? We've got s it's going to be a 6. We are a f 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we're going to take another horror this turn. That's okay. Or do we engage the man? 
Oh, it's a tough choice. It's probably easier to engage him, but we only need to hit him once. I'm going to draw... Oh, I haven't seen my weakness either. Either weakness, I think. Yeah, I haven't seen either weakness. I don't want to see my weakness right now. Um... I'm going to gain a resource as my final action. Okay. We go to the enemy phase. Royal Emissary does nothing. But I do take a horror. Upkeep he readies. I draw a card. Oh, nice. There's my, my uh, Uncage the Soul. I gain a resource. Add a Doom. Draw an Encounter card. It's another Twisted to his will. Oh no. Okay, so that's going to be four. Now it's four versus three. So we're going to pitch the that. So now it is... Uh, four, five, six versus three. I'm going to pitch one resource to go seven versus three again. And we get the elder sign. Nice. So we can, we get plus three and we draw an event. So we'll, we'll draw that ward of protection. We gain a resource from Lone Wolf. We are going to try to investigate. It's going to be six versus two, four, six, seven, seven versus six, minus four, seven, eight, nine, ten versus six. Come on, Chaos Bag. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Minus four, but ten minus six. We pass. We defeat the man in the pallid mask again. And we resign. Yeah! Safina! Way to go, girl. That's the way. And we end up with three VPs out of the deal. It uh, turns out, well, the shriveling did come in handy because we did need to kill that fanatic, but uh, wow, what a game. That was a great game. Safina, once again, I'm able to uh, to beat Curtain Call with her. Uh, I, so the uh, Agent of the King ended up in our victory display. We also ended up with uh, two VPs, or two, uh, yeah, two victory points, one from the trap room and the other from the balcony. So for three total... Really good game. Um, yeah, I think patience was the key there, just trying to, to, to really just stave off for as long as possible, turning those skulls on and making my, skill, my tests that much harder. Um, yeah, it just it came down to the end. Again, Arcane Studies is so clutch at the end of this scenario with Safina because you've, if you've got the resources, you can pitch them and you can put yourself in that position where even if you've got say the tablets in the bag you can uh, pull them and uh, you can boost up your skill high enough just basically just mean that the only thing that can stop you is the tentacle and uh, yeah so we were able to do that I was hoping to kill the uh, Royal Emissary for those extra two VPs but uh, I think it was just going to be our health, we didn't have an ally to protect us, and our health just wasn't quite there where I'd want to be. And uh, I was concerned I was going to have to spend way too many resources um, boosting tests with Arcane Studies, especially with those those two tablets in the bag. Uh, if we'd managed to do it somehow just before we beat the man in the Pallid Mask, that might have been, you know, maybe I should have waited a turn and then defeat the man, but... 
such as life, we, uh, we end up with a uh, putting up the W here and we do get uh, three VPs out of it. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, can't complain. So that's going to do it for me today. That, uh, that was a hell of a game. If you enjoyed this playthrough, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. It always helps out the channel a great deal. If you notice that I made any mistakes or you just want to, to chat about this game, please leave a comment down below. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. Um, if you'd like to contact me, you can be, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.